I'd pick a different spot out of the public view as much. I've been sitting here for about five minutes or so just kind of checking it out and uh, believe it or not I've had more conversations in five or maybe probably ten minutes actually. Hey there's Greyhound going to Los Angeles. We're not this is right behind the camera here is uh, Interstate 70 uh, and the exit to uh, Vale Village and the roundabout right behind the camera, well, half a block away. And uh, then this comes into Vale Village. This building to my left, right behind me, I wanted to sit here because this is one spectacular building. It is, uh, I walked in there again, it is just <laughs> breathtaking. I mean, it literally takes your breath away because uh, it's so uh, so spectacular but we want to read this and uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I tell you you would think that you'd have to be around a lot of people to get a lot be get noticed but I have noticed that you do not have to be around a lot of people to get noticed all you know all you need is one person you know, you witness to one person, and uh, a lot of good things can happen. They, yeah, a lot of good things. I'm talking to these cameras video a little closer than I normally do, I think. But uh, there just isn't any way to get some of these videos done the way I want them done. So let me take these off so I can kind of see. All right, so uh, uh, it's almost time for me to go and uh, wait for the bus because it's a little bit of a walk because I'm clear on the western side of this is the western end of the village so I mean I'm quite a long distance I've walked through the entire village uh, it's pretty expansive I tried to go through a lot of different areas that I haven't been before last time I was here and uh, I found a lot of little nooks and crannies little sidewalks little paths here into secret little entrances to shops and restaurants uh, secret little entrances to hotels there's a massive amount of hotels here in Vail and uh, you wouldn't notice it really but it, there is so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, coming back All right. so uh, what I want to do again is uh, the, all these videos they're not in order they may seem like they're in order but they're not in order but they all have a theme to it, and the theme is Mark 16:15. I'm going to read that again to you. Mark 16:15 is the theme. It's also the theme to the uh, uh, what I call a soul-winning video, a soul-winning short film. It's just where I put a lot of different clips together, and I put some music, and I put some Bible verses, and it's just a little three-minute thing that I started creating here a while back, and I seem to do that every month or two or three months. As I moved, I wanted to do one on travel, and that's what we're doing here. So Mark 16, 15 says, uh, And he, Jesus Christ, said unto them, the disciples, and all of us actually, uh, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. It's a pretty famous verse. Everyone uses that verse. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people use that. I've used it for, it seemed like my, all my ministering life, except for when I was in the Navy. I didn't know this verse existed. I don't think. I can't remember what verses I used a lot of. <laughs> Most of it was Revelation 12, 11 because I talked about my testimony because it was so dramatic. I had a very dramatic conversion and uh, that's why I remembered my prayer that I prayed to receive Christ because it was dramatic and I used that to begin preaching because two weeks after I got saved the Lord says I want you to preach I want you to minister but first I want you to go to school well I was on board ship at the time so there was no school but I started preaching and ministering right away and it took me about nine or ten years uh, to get to school 
Then after I finished my schooling, it took me five years of uh, training to become ordained and ministered, uh, ordained and licensed in Oklahoma. And uh, finished that in uh, 88, I believe, 88, and, uh, and kept on preaching. That didn't really slow me up, but it gave me a lot of knowledge of what to do next. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, uh, <laughs> that's what I've been doing. However, um, uh, I use my testimony as my preaching. That's why I've said so many of my videos. If you've uh, noticed, uh, if you've just got saved, uh, you're ready to go. Uh, you don't have to go to school. You don't have to get some training. You have to be somebody special. You just have to make sure you're all cleaned up by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, you uh, know uh, a couple Bible verses. Uh, the main one that you're going to use to preach from is what I suggested because that's what I did and that was Revelation 12:11. Uh, they overcome the thief. Uh, they overcame him by the they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. So him as the thief as Satan uh, by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony is how we overcame and that's what I started preaching on when I first got saved. And uh, that's Revelation 12:11. We love not our lives unto death. And uh, um, you know, as I was sitting here before I turned the video on, I was thinking about all the people who, because a lot of people who are here today have children that are not in school yet, and then that's that group of people because it, school has already begun. So all the parents who have children are all gone, and then it's the elderly, the old, you know, retired people like myself who are here. So we have two extremes of people, the young parents who have young preschool children and then the older retired people. So as I was sitting here thinking, especially sitting at this bench, I was thinking about how so many people uh, seek after the world. I mean, truly, they spend their entire life seeking after what is going to disappear and if you're a believer seeking the world that means you're not going to have anything on the other side you're not going to have anything stored up in heaven it's really sad and you know when you seek the world it steals the word of god out of your heart i see it so often People get all excited about the Word of God. You know, I've ministered all my life, and they uh, get excited about the Word of God. They're, they, they move forward in the Word of God. Then they get wrapped up in the cares of the world, and you talk to them a year later, two years, five years later, and it's like, oh, Bible, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, Jesus, yeah, 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 I know Jesus, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, anyways, enough of that. And they go on to another, they've left Jesus. They have left the Word of God and they've done that because they've turned away from Jesus and in back into the world and their cares, their thoughts, their planning, everything that they're doing is about the cares of the world. And this Vale Village, this whole village is all about the cares of the world. It's all this village is about, the cares of the world. Every square inch of this magnificent multi 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 billion billion dollar resort village of some sort and that's uh what it is you know <laughs> uh, being a witness <laughs> so uh so once again the verse is uh and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature now we know it's the gospel not good news because in verse 20 he says that the Lord con uh, was working with them and confirming the Word. The Word is not news. The Word is the Gospel. The Word is uh, what Jesus taught us. The Word is what's in the, the Bible. And uh, of course, you know, good news is in the King James too. I'm not saying good news is not a good thing because when you go preach to people, it's good news to people. A lot of people, it's good news. It's the Word of God that you're preaching but that word of God that you're preaching sounds like good news to them. Amen? So you want to make it sound like good news. You don't want to make it sound like, uh, 
is evil news or it's hate-filled news or it's divisive news. It needs to be good news. And, uh, and think about that. If you're a preacher or a minister, think about is, the, is what you're preaching uh, sound like good news? Well, you know, I don't know. You have to kind of check that for yourself, you know? And uh, <laughs> I <laughs> check that for yourself because uh, you don't know. Uh, uh, if you just listen to yourself, you may not know. But uh, uh, look at the people and how they're responding. Like the, all the people, there's been several people go by me while I've been doing this video, even before I did the video. That's why I thought I'd do a video here because. Uh, uh, I'm right on the walkway. I mean, you cannot not walk right past me. <laughs> and that's where I've kind of been everywhere, pretty much. And uh, uh, you want to have a smile on If it's good news, guess what you're going to, are you going to be frowning? Are you going to be down in the mouth, I guess you could say, if, it, if you're preaching good news? No, you're going to have a joy about you. You're going to have an excitement about you. You're going to have a great big old smile on your face. You're going to have a twinkle in your eye. And uh, But if you're screaming and yelling at somebody uh, how, how evil they are, is that, can people say, Boy, he is preaching uh, good news, I guess. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but, you, you know, people get into traps. That's why the Holy Spirit says, do not copy anyone else. And, you know, because I thought that and when I went out into the street, I'd have to copy other street preachers. But Holy Ghost was very, very specific to me. Do not copy anyone. And, as you know, like uh, Scott mentioned to me, he says, man, you've got over 600 videos on YouTube. 600. <laughs> he gave me the number. I don't know what the number is. Six something. I said, yeah, they just keep piling up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, none of my videos sound like anybody that is out there in the world. Uh, they sound just exactly like what the Holy Ghost wanted me to sound like and to preach on and how to deliver the message, how to deliver good news. Because let me tell you, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is great, great good news. It is super good news to those who have been sinning. It was good news to me, man, because I was a drug addict. And uh, when I heard the preaching of the gospel, um, actually, I didn't hear the preaching of the gospel. Let me take that back. Um, uh, the only preaching I ever heard before I got saved was all in Latin. Yeah, Catholic. You know, it was long before uh, they allowed English in the uh, Catholic cathedral. Uh, it was always Latin. So every message I ever heard out of the Bible was always, always, always Latin. And, uh, and then uh, in the Navy, uh, I don't remember any... Uh, I didn't go to any churches. I wasn't saved. Yeah. And uh, even the guys who I never went to their Bible study on board ship. I'm Navy, U.S. Navy, U.S. Vietnam. And, uh, 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 and so one day when we went to battle stations, uh, when you go to battle stations on board ship, you never know how long you're going to stay. So you, but everyone's assigned. Every single person on board ship has a station. Uh, you're not in the, you, you go to your station. And so one of my after, because I'm in navigation, my station was on, it's called after station. It's a uh, steering uh, uh, helm on top of the rudder. And so I'm the first one who gets blown up. <laughs> the bridge is the second, or it's usually maybe the bridge is the first and the, and the rudder is the second. <laughs> so I would have been blown up uh, either first or second. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it's a, it would have been a quick kill, but that never happened. So when I went to battle stations one day, uh, one of the six guys who'd been ministering to me, trying to get me saved, and I had nothing to do with it, it's Fred Birch out of Farmington, Michigan. God bless you, Fred. If, you ever, if you're still alive, you're still around. Uh, he was reading his big old King James black, black Bible, and I said, Fred, do you mind leaving your Bible? I can't believe I said that, but I did. And praise God, it was a King James Bible. That was a that was a gift to God from God to me, because if it was any other, if it was any other Bible, 
uh, I might not have got saved. I just, I, because I'm very picky. I, I have a strong intuition. Uh, I've always been gifted in the spiritual discernment. Uh, I was heavily involved in witchcraft and uh, divination. And uh, so I have, I've always had those spiritual gifts inside of me. Uh, but at that time they were used for Satan. And uh, I would have known right away that it was a corrupt text. But I did not get that indication uh, when I was reading. So I read the King James Bible for five hours. So that's the only preaching that I ever got before I got saved. It was me reading uh, the King James Bible from page one. Well, actually, it wasn't even page one. It was right where it said I read the title printed by uh, copyright uh, version number Genesis 1. And I just read every, every word, t everything for five hours until our battle was, uh, uh, the battle stations was lifted. And two weeks later, I laid in my bunk, my rack, uh, in an operations department, and uh, I just said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. And that's when I had my dramatic conversion. A lot of things happened. I can go into that right now. But uh, uh, I became born again, child of God. And, uh, and that's the words I said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. And I guess, uh, I guess I wanted to believe that, really, truly wanted to believe. And why I wanted to believe it was because I was trapped in cocaine addiction. And uh, stupid me, right? I mean, stupid, stupid. Got involved in the wrong people, wrong crowd, and uh, just... just went down that wrong path and uh, uh, it was really sad and I had no way out no way out uh, and when I was reading the Bible I guess I had enough enough curiosity enough something to ask Jesus if he truly was real or not and that if he was real, I wanted Jesus. You know, and uh, I got set free completely that very moment. And I have been clean for 48 years. It's been, uh, been an amazing walk. Now I am in this beautiful town of Vail doing all these little videos. So, it says here in Mark 16, 15, And Jesus said unto them, the believers, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So Lord, I thank you that there are people on board Navy ships that are preaching the gospel to this creature. This creature here. And this creature became a new creature in Christ. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me that day, way back when, and calling me into the ministry to preach and to minister. And I thank you, Lord, that you've just blessed me, blessed me, blessed me, blessed me over all these decades. And you're still allowing me to preach and to minister. It's just been an amazing walk, Lord. And I so thank you for what you're doing in my life. I dedicate this video and I commit it all to you. I commit the people, Lord. And I just ask your blessings upon each person who's watching me. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, uh, I might do another video. I'm not sure, but these are all kind of mixed together. They're not in order. So uh, God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.